Hi, Lou here to talk about the nuts and bolts of a really old but very often used mechanic, the roll and move mechanic. So what's roll and move? Well, you, you've undoubtedly seen it in Monopoly, Game of Life, and many other poor games, or at least games that are poor for adults. There's a track on the board. You roll dice, usually two, sum them up, and move your piece along the trap that many places. It's still commonly used in children's games, but not often in adult games. The question is, what's wrong and what's right with it? Yes, it is old, but that isn't why it's undesirable to use in hobby games. Age or frequency of use does not matter. I'm not a traditionalist, nor am I one of the cult of the new types. Many mechanics are new, even brand new, but that doesn't necessarily make them good or better than the old ones. So I want to know what is this mechanic good for regardless of its age or how often it's been used. Of course, some mechanics are used so much that they seem old, for example, worker placement and deck building. But once again, that's not a reason to dislike the mechanic per se. It's because the reason people play games is to be surprised. And if they see a mechanic that's old or that's used very often, even if it's not old, then they're less likely to be surprised. On the other hand, innovation is highly overrated because it's so rare to encounter an entirely new mechanic. Many mechanics that people think are entirely new turn out to have been used 20, 30, 50 years ago. And of course, a mechanic can be new to the player, but not new to the world. For example, Stratego, which dates back to just after World War II, might have been thought to be a innovative mechanic at that point, with the hidden pieces and moving along a, a board of squares. But in fact, it's an almost exact knockoff of a game that was patented in France in 1909 and published in England in 1909. But if you didn't know that, Stratego would have seemed quite new to you. So, we've got all the false criteria, I hope, out of the way. What about roll and move? First and foremost, it takes all control away from the player. Now, that doesn't bother children who, if they're young enough, think completely random games are cool, like Candyland and Shoots and Ladders, also known as Snakes and Ladders. But it bothers serious game players. Now, it used to be that hobby gamers were serious game players. Now there are many hobby game players who I would not call serious game players. We're having people who like family games and who like party games move into the hobby. That is, people who play games on a regular basis as a hobby. Of course, the mechanic is entirely random. And people tend to dislike randomness because it takes away all control. Now, some uncertainty, whether it's randomness or something else, is necessary in games as opposed to puzzles so that we can avoid having an always correct solution. But many players want to be able to manage their risk, and there is no management in Roll and Move. In a nutshell, Roll and Move gives no control. There's no way to manage it. It's entirely random. Adults tend not to like it. Certainly adult regular game players. On the other hand, it is easy to use. It's easy for the designer. It's easy for the player. And that may be why it continues to be used in mass market games. It turns up in some party games too, but players don't really care who wins a party game. That's almost in the definition. Nonetheless, how many self-respecting designers of adult games, that is games that are not for children, would use roll and move virtually none. If you see an adult designing a game for adults using roll and move, it marks them immediately as a novice designer. And I think if you took a vote of designers of hobby games, they'd likely declare roll and move the worst mechanic ever. So if you're an aspiring game designer, don't even think about using roll and move unless you can justify it very, very well. Thanks for listening.